So, 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 this is another realm of apostolic grace and the grace for apostleship. Because the grace for apostleship is really a grace also for stewardship and partnership with angels. Imagine your personal angel watch you every single day. Your personal angel watch you every single day and look at you to see what you're going to do. Will you pursue God today? Will you be thankful? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. 
Will you be focused? Every day your guardian angel just right there watching you. Looking to see how will you deal with life? Are you disturbed? Are you bothered? Are you stressed? Are you worried? Are you trying to figure it out? Or are you in full, complete trust of Jesus, his word, his presence, his angelic assistance to your life? Uh, learn to put your angels to work because they, 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 they don't like being bored. Don't let your angels be bored. Don't let your angels have nothing to do. Let them hear you speaking the word and praising God and having excitement all the time. Let them see you because your personal angel is always watching you, even when you think nobody's watching you. That's why I always tell you, tell you be ready all the time because... What I'm, what I'm showing you is that in the spirit world, whether you think nobody watching, your angel watching, your angel know when you when you didn't get that mustache fridge. I'm looking like you about to cook some spaghetti. <laughs> you done turned into that cheese man on the box. <laughs> and walking around, to, don't you know no good? Throwing up spaghetti and spaghetti rolls up and whoosh. <laughs> Saints, you ever wonder how they used to cook spaghetti like that? I never understood how that man was whoosh, whoosh, and all the sound effects. And when the spaghetti hit him, you hear that little whoosh. Huh? And then make that slap sound like y'all don't even want it no more. <laughs> Saints, you ever seen that happen? Saints, you ever seen you ever seen a brother cooking your pizza? You like, why is his hands? Tulsa, I done watched it. Nah, man, you rubbing on it too much. Nah. You rubbing on it too much. It's too intimate. It's too intimate. I I know nah, I don't want it. Nah, you can't charge me for it. You can't charge me for it. I ain't bite it. I ain't do none of that. No, you you rubbed it too much and then when it hit your hand like that, I don't want it. <laughs> that scared me. No. I can't eat from no man's hands like that. It just hit you and then, then you want me to want to serve it to me. No, I'm not having it. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. I remember one time my mother, she used to buy this pizza, right? I think it's still going Saboro. Yeah, a, a Saboro, we always call it wrong. It's a, it's a black spirit. It's a borrow. Whatever they call it. It start with an S. With an S. Used to go get pizza from that place all the time, right? Huh? Used to get pizza from that place all the time, right? So one time there was a man there. He was just coughing. My mother said, mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't want it. He said, what, ma'am? What, ma'am? And there's always an Italian man that that's looked like he's supposed to be on Dancing with the Stars. Y'all ever noticed that? It's always like an Italian man that looked like he's supposed to be on Dancing with the Stars. He's like, what? What did I do? What? <laughs> At that time, my mother was younger and stuff like that. So he like, you pretty woman. You pretty woman. Why? Why? What do you want? What do you want? I change it. I change it. I fix it. Mother said, nah, you, you coughed all over it. He said, okay, look, I do another one. My mother said, no, nah, but you ain't wash your hands. He said, wait now, wait now. I do it, I do it. When he looked up, we was gone. <laughs> Saints, people in the malls are becoming aggressive. I don't really go to the malls too much. I got I got my own mall in my closet. I, I got so much clothes and different stuff in but malls, you notice that people in the malls be so aggressive, like they try to make you buy stuff. And like they try to follow you. You, you don't want it? You don't want it? You don't want it? You don't want it! <laughs> hey! Is you trying to rob me, dude? Doug? <laughs> Say, so like, uh, if you went to school, you knew somebody that fought like this. When it tap box, 
If, if you if, listen, if you was in school between the eighties and nineties or nineties and two thousands, you know somebody that slap box like this here. <laughs> I, I had a boy one time, he slap box like that. So he, so watch, he used to do like that all the time. And, and, and he up there hissing like a little, little, so it came my time to slap box him and he will always beat people, right? So I found out, I found out the trick for him. <laughs> he came up to me, to, and we're just playing around now. He said, he said, oh, I had to wipe spit off my eyes a couple of times. I'm like, this is unnecessary, brother. Would you, would you think that you baby Jesus or something? You think you baby Jesus or something? You ain't had to spit on my eyelids, baby. You ain't got to do all of that. Come on, man. And since the people that always do that always got a gap. You notice that, right? I mean, you ever met them people with the gap? They always want to do that to you. No, you can't do that. That's illegal for you. Cause you don't got no gates. This this you ain't got no covering. It's going it's going. <laughs> no, that's illegal for you. That's that's a violation. You cheating. <laughs> you cheating. Me and you can't fight like this. Cause cause when when you you spitting in my eye, I can't see. Time out. Time out. Uh, you can't be up there cheating. You all the law. No wonder you beat all these other Negroes. Because you spit in the eye that came up with them that knocked them out. So he was up there. He he thought he was going to get me. Because I was smaller than him in height uh, at that time. So he up there. Tss, tss. So, so Saints, I found out the strategy. And, it, you know, my David strategy. I went up to him like that too. With his same stance. I said, tss, and then bam. I can't, I, I, listen, when I did, tss, he got stuck. I, <laughs> and then I, I went underneath him. I went underneath him. To, I went underneath him. Says when he got knocked out, I said, tss, 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 who on next? Who want next? There's about two of y'all won't won't get it. No, he on the floor. Let him let him rest. Let him rest. He he went sleep late last night. Let's go to Isaiah sixty. Look at this here. Let's go to Isaiah 60, verse 11. Look what it says right here. Um, Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. So where are these gates? These gates are in the spirit realm. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. Now, saints, if these gates are open continually, that means that money is programmed by God to get to me continuously. That means that financial doors are continuously going to find me. That means that favor with men are going to overtake me. So I'm going to be put in position where people are going to feel moved by God to invest money into me. But saints, what I'm telling you in this, that this gate is activated, released, and intensified through having radical sowing, aggressive sowing. See, I, I got to go to the next level with God if I'm going to step here. Because cause this, this realm will kill me if my heart hasn't been possessed with sowing grace. This realm will take me out. And I might not think that the realm is going to take me out, but it's going to take me out because what happened is 
when the money start just coming to you like a tsunami, witchcraft can overtake you if you don't know how to master worship. See, sowing grace manages wealth. If you're taking notes, write that down. Sowing grace manages wealth. Because cause if I don't manage wealth, the spirit of mammon is going to overtake me. And the money I have is going to become my God. And, and watch this. I'll never say that the money is my God, but it'll become my God because I'll start making decisions. I'll start um, resisting God in this avenue. You see? Have you ever noticed if you black, your phone going to go to 1% more than once a week? I promise you. <laughs> no, some, some. No, it go, more than once. Now I'm prophesizing. I, no, you might try to fix it now. <laughs> you might try to fix it now. And saints, you know what we black people do? Our phone be on 1% and we still be watching YouTube. Our phone be on 1%. We up there going to answer the daggone call. No, don't answer the call. You And then watch. When the person hang up on you, you think that they're being disrespectful. And then you try to call them back. It's going back to voicemail. Ah, here they go. They're trying to flex on me. They're trying to flex on me. Not We were just on the phone. Because I'm talking about Jesus. Now, I did this the last time, man. This wasn't... No, I, no as soon as I started talking about... Hosea, and I went over to Hosea, switched over to Jeremiah, I heard a breach on the phone, then I looked at the phone, it was on zero. They're being disrespectful again. I, watch, let them, let them try to call me back again. I answered the phone. Your phone be on like 1%, you still be trying to do stuff with it. You know your phone about to cut off, and the more stuff that you do, your phone be up there skipping. You try to scroll on Facebook, you up there made, you done like the uh, 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 porno website by mistake. <laughs> if, how many of y'all ever went go follow a porno account by mistake? You ain't mean to. You thought that the person was up there, a normal person. You didn't know it was a glitch. They done invited you to the, you up there, you mess, mess around, press the wrong button, you up there. They, they got Afghanistan in music. <laughs> They got Afghanistan and music in there. I don't like a like a like a like a like Lady up there talking like a like a dancing like a broke Mary J. Blige. <laughs> you ain't know that that account was up there going to invite you. There was one time in my life I didn't know what no boob was. I, th <laughs> I didn't know what no boob was. One time somebody said, you want boobs? You want to see some boobs? I was like, um, yeah, why not? You... Is it fruit? Um, vegetables? No, man, we just going to watch some boobs. Just let's see it. Wait, I don't really feel right about this. Is is um... Is it uh is it next to the store? No 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 let's watch it let's watch it I'm about to put it on. You, like, oh no nah, nah, you ain't tell me. Nah this is this is a part. <laughs> I thought that this was was a meal or something like that. Did you no you ain't tell me I no nah, she she gardening the eating that's. I no nah, see no nah, that's. Look at Isaiah 60. A good understanding, give it favor. See, you got to get a good understanding. You, know? you don't know where people leading you. You got to make sure that you get a good understanding. You got to get a good understanding. Once you get a good understanding, then you don't know where they're leading you. Now, Isaiah 60 verse 11 says, Therefore your gate shall be open continually. Saints, money cometh. 
supernatural money moving. Wealth wonders can become so rapid in your life. The quickness of it, the speed of it, where God expedites financial transactions and makes you a recipient of an overflowing cup, an overflowing cup. My cup runneth over. See, Psalm 23, David understood when the tsunami and the floodgates of finances will hit you, when the blessing will blow your mind, and when the increase will keep on increasing. See, Jesus desires to load you with overwhelming benefits. And you notice what the Bible said, he want to do this daily. So every day, Jesus got on his mind, how could I load you with benefits? So this not something that you got to get anxious about. Saints, when, when I was in my sowing process and uh, Jesus was, uh, was uh, coaching me and training me with sowing, I did not get anxious and I had the opportunity to get anxious. If you take a note, write this down. Every sower has to constantly deny the opportunity to become anxious. If you take a note, write this down. Every sower must humble themselves to be God entitled, not self entitled. Now, now this is powerful what I just said. Because being self-entitled and God-entitled are two different realms. When I'm God-entitled, I know that it belongs to me, but I rejoice in the process of the manifestation of it. When I'm God-entitled, I have knowledge that it is my right. But I know that I don't, I don't have any rights to try to rush God. I know that the stuff is my right, but I know that I don't have a right to try to pressure him. Oh my God. Because if I, if, if, when I'm God entitled, I'll get the revelation that my seed already applying pressure. My, my seed, my seed. If, if I get a revelation, my, my seed already applying pressure. So, so I don't got to pressure God. I don't got to pressure God. My honor got his attention. That's why so is so powerful. Because when you praying, it's like you got to pressure God. You got to convince him. You got to persuade him. But when you sowing, the seed applying the pressure. Because every sower got to know this. Your seed go directly to Jesus' heart. That, that, that's why I did, he in the he in the assembly. What happened? The Bible said that he looking at the woman sowing the two mites because her seed is going straight to Jesus' heart, and, and Jesus already knew her position. My God, right he already knew her condition because he knew that this was her least uh, uh, least amount of money. She had a low level financially, but she still sowing aggressively. So we show you that Jesus already know what you got. He looking for somebody that know what he got. Because he already know what you got. But when will you get the revelation of what he got? When you get the revelation of what he got, then you and God can do partnership together. Revelation is God bringing you into his closet. Uh-oh, write that down. That's fresh. Revelation is God bringing you into his closet. And watch, when you get into his closet, it's full of clothes. So you start pinning them on. 
And one of the clothes is for wealth. And one of the clothes is for sowing. And one of the clothes is for praise. And one of the clothes is for consistency. One of the clothes is for thankfulness. One of the clothes is for humility. One of the clothes is for virtue. One of the clothes is for honor. One of the clothes is for listening. Clothes for, for, for walking in the spirit. Clothes for praying in the Holy Ghost. What happened when you put on the clothes for riches? Riches got to come to you. Because now Jesus done put divine technology on you. My God. He done put divine technology on you. You got an invisible magnet. An invisible magnet. So that you won't be stagnant. See, all other things is a magnetic mantle being added unto you. All other things, somebody write that down. All other things being added unto you is a magnetic mantle. I ain't never heard that before. A magnetic mantle. All other things being added unto you is a magnetic mantle. Watch this. All other things is Jesus coming into a covenant for you to enjoy the pleasures of life. Remember that. Remember that. All other things is Jesus coming into a covenant with you for you to enjoy the pleasures of life. He going to fix it for you. I just sold, what, $2,100 into my mother. I feel good. Well, I'm telling you because I'm a sower. $2,100. I realized it. It's $21. If you don't have the mindset of sowing, you put a breach on your financial reach. So you can't go no further with God. The world taught you to save, save, save. The world's stupid. The world taught you the Adamic, the curse, the Eve inspired system. It's the world that taught you that. You're not of this world. You of Jesus. And his kingdom is not of this world. And his kingdom is raised over all. And watch this. The kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. So, so if you wise, you won't adapt to what the world talk about. You'll adapt to what the king and the kingdom talk about. God sent me as a king to you to let you know that my king is a God of riches. He's a God of wealth. No, some of y'all need to say it. If you on my broadcast, say this. I am a God of riches. No, no, I'm talking about you. I ain't talking about God. I said, you say it. You are a God. But say, I am a God of riches. Say it. You ain't never said it before. Unlock your spirit man. Your spirit man tired of you being dusty. Your spirit man tired of you not walking in your divine covenant. Your spirit man is tired of you settling for the curse realm when you have the verse realm. You can manifest this. You a manifester. And enjoy the process of manifesting. Do you notice that God created everything in about seven days? On seven days he rested for about six days? Process. Time. So if God created his world in time, enjoy the process of creating your world. And look what he did. 
He took moments to rejoice in what he created. See, the problem with you, daughter, the problem with you, son, is that you concentrated on your failures and never celebrated your victories. That's why you fall back into failure. You never took the time because the devil told you that's demonic. Oh, don't, don't celebrate. But while you didn't celebrate it, you stepped right back into the failures. That's powerful what I just told you. Y'all know that's hot. <laughs> you know that's king of the wisdom-ish. You know that's hot. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you ain't my daddy, shut up. You know that's hot. You know that what I just said was hot. You concentrated on your failures and never celebrated your victories. So then the failure find itself overcoming you again and overtaking you again. Because when you was about to celebrate your victories, the devil say, no, that's pride. No, what's pride is you going back into failure. Pride is not when I celebrate that I stand. Pride is when I submit to falling. Pride, you heard what I said? Pride is not when I celebrate that I stand. Pride is when I submit to falling. But see, the devil will have you not celebrate that you're standing so that you'll end up falling again. My God, I prophesy there's an anointing on you for complete perfection. Praise God. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. It says, by much slothfulness, the building decayeth, and through idleness of hands, the house droppeth through. I'm going to read this one more time. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands, Idleness of the hands. Somebody write this down. Idleness of the hands. Is the conduct of the non-sower. Number two. Idleness of the hands is the conduct of the non-worker. By idleness of the hands. Number three, idleness of the hands is laziness to use your five stones to kill Goliath. Number four, idleness of the hands is Peter going to sleep? When Satan has scheduled him denying Jesus three times. This hot, this hot, this hot. See, oh my God. See, see this, this out of hand. This, this out of hand. See, Peter going to sleep is idleness. And watch what happens. The house droppeth through. So that means that the house fall. You know what a house dropping through? It means that the house, its foundation, its roof, everything just crumbled. Like the house not even livable no more. Which, which shows you that idleness takes away the life of God from your reality, your mentality. Idleness of hands makes God disappear in your consciousness. You caught that? Makes God disappear in your consciousness. Idleness of hands. Makes God disappear in your consciousness. 
idleness of hands removes the aggression for fulfilling God's instruction. Now look at this. By much slowfulness, saints, may I tell you that one of the greatest realms of slowfulness is not being able to sow unto the Lord. One of the greatest slowfulness is not sowing seed. Because if God created the first man and picked the seed and said, as long as the earth remained in, in Noah's day, there'll be seed time and harvest. And, and God exalted this and said, this will never change. He made it permanent. If it's permanent, that means that it got permanent power. And there's permanent prosperity. And there's permanent victory. And there's permanent deliverance. And there's permanent abundance. And there's permanent increase. And there's permanent wealth. And there's permanent eternal life. It's a permanent principle with permanent pleasure. One of, the, one of the worst places you could ever be in your life is when you can't sow. The second worst place that you'll be in your life is where you won't sow. Both of them are tormented realms. Because I don't have, either I'm not going to have the weapon or I'm going to have the weapon and choose not to use it. Or I can use the weapon and defeat all of Satan's kingdom. See, slowfulness is a spirit that loves to see other people enjoy your wealth. Slowfulness is a spirit that loves to see the ungodly. Enjoy your inheritance. What, what I prophesied to you that the rest of this year You'll not only experience money miracles, but money mantles. And I pronounce upon your life in Jesus name. That money. Be loosed in the earth for you. Money cometh to you. Supernatural money move for you right now. Right now, I speak wealth into existence in your environment, in your finances, in your hands, in your sewing now. Now, you have wealth gates. So, what I have to catch when I'm sowing is that all of these wealth gates are being accessed by my decision. These wealth gates are flying open for me. Wow, these wealth gates are flying open for me. What do you think are in the gates? Well, you thought it was tissue? Angel saw? What? What you think?
think inside the wealth, man? Gates. It's called wealth gates because wealth inside of there. Saints, do you understand how Isaiah 60 verse 11, Jesus is revealing to you that you got gates, you got portals, you got land in the spirit realm that has been programmed to respond to you in the earth realm and to give you wealth. That may, you know what wealth means, to have an abundance of all that you want and desire, to have it in overflow, excess. I said no XX. I said excess. <laughs> Excuse my accent. Some of y'all don't just tell What you said, Prophet? Hi, huh? hello. The what? <laughs> hey, if you ain't never laughed, if you watch my broadcast all today, I got jokes. I got comedy all all today. <laughs> My man ain't pleasing me no way. My man ain't pleasing me no way. <laughs> Leave that man alone. Give him some water. <laughs> he tired. He needs some. <laughs> Give him some ex 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 extra gin. <laughs> Give, Give him some. <laughs> Give him some extra gin and some oxygen. Up oh, there. It's your fault. You was a young chicken. He, he. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Let's go to verse 17. He sent a man before them named Joseph who was sold for a servant. Psalm 105 verse 18. His feet was hurt with fetters and he was laid in iron. Do you know what that mean? Joseph went through his own type of crucifixion. His feet was in fetters. His feet was hurt. And then they put him, they laid him in iron. That's painful. Iron is very uncomfortable. That's painful. That's torture. So saints, hereby you find out that Joseph went through a little torture. Verse 19, until the time his word came. There's a coming of your There's a coming of your word. Moving along. Psalm 105. <laughs> Verse 19. <laughs> don't worry about me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> Hey, don't Hey, I promise you. Don't worry about me. My mind my mind animated. That's Psalm 105. There's a coming of your word. Psalm 105. Until the word, his word came. <laughs> Let me get back to this. Let me finish. The word of the Lord tried him. Are you seeing this? Until his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Are you catching this? So in the midst of him waiting for what, what God promised him to manifest, the Lord in the back scene trying him. Let me see if you're ready. Now, nah, don't be don't be telling some with your mouth. Let me see. I'm gonna try you. No, no. I, I know that you say you want 
you you want you want a nice car, but let me see how you treat the car that you do got already. Or, or let me look at your thankfulness while you catching the bus. See, while the manifestation ain't hit yet, don't be jumping talking about devil, 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 because Jesus still right there trying you is him, is Jesus. Because saints, understand Jesus can manifest what he want, when he want, however he want, wherever he want. Now, saints, isn't this so powerful? Aren't we so blessed? You get to listen to your man of God daily. I got fresh material. I don't preach the same message. You get to hear all type of deep stuff. It quicken you. It strengthen you. It make you laugh. It make you happy. It occupy your time. You not you not living no boy life. People up there are being impacted through this ministry. Do you understand the blessing of this? Why take this for granted? Why question this with your broke self? If something make you happy continuously, don't you think that the wisdom of God in it, Harpo? The Bible say happy is the one, is the man that findeth wisdom. Don't you think that the Lord is in this, Harpo? Think about it. Can the devil continuously give me happiness? Say so. Say, Satan can't even read, huh? When I found out that R. Kelly can't read, I was like, oh, okay, R. Kelly got devil inside him. That's the only reason why I knew. And not the other stuff. And pee on a girl, that's and pee on a girl. Is, I found out that R. Kelly had a devil inside when they said that he couldn't read. <laughs> Money! Until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. So does God ever try? Yeah. You. Ain't that powerful? Think about that. That's a strong statement. It's like parable. Does God ever try? Yeah. You. The only indefinite side of God is you. Because you are part of him, but you can decide to detach yourself if you want. You caught that? The only indefinite side of God is you. Because you are part of him, you can detach yourself if you decide. Does God ever try? Does he always just do, do, do? Yeah. His trying realm is you. So, you know, you say, I'm trying to lift up this couch. That means that there's a possibility that the couch won't lift. I'm trying to eat this food. That means that there's a possibility that you won't be able to digest it. So, when God tries you, there's a possibility that you might not make it. But... What's that possibility in? You. You. Uh, what I'm telling you is, if you be willing and obedient, Isaiah 119, you shall eat the good of the land. Hereby you find out the apostolic mystery. That God oftentimes have made you the God of how your life will go. No, you can't preach like this unless you're in the God realm. See, I'm preaching to you from the God realm. I said God oftentimes make you the God of how your life is going to go in the future. 
He make you the God. So, so you see how I'm teaching you about train. Uh, I'm training you about sowing and I'm training you about having an excellent spirit and I'm training you about having consistency and I'm training you about your reactions and I'm training you about what to say and what not to say, who to listen to, who to block out, who, who not to uh, 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 give access to the knowledge that you have. You understand why I'm giving you this type of par uh, parameters? Parameters? You understand why I'm giving you this type of boundary? Because I'm showing you how to be a mighty God in creating the life that you're about to live. Oh, my God. What? Mighty God. Mighty. Ho. 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 I'm teaching you. How to be a mighty God in the life that you're about to live. And how to create and procreate, money create, wealth create, healing create, freedom create, blessing create, joy create. We already read Proverbs 15, 23, how a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. Don't look at your bank account. I'm not talking about your bank account, your skank account, or your stank account. Your bank, your stank, your stank is a skank, is all in one accord. Your bank account is not your heavenly amount. You caught that? Your bank account is not your heavenly amount. You got a superior system that's working for you right now. A superior Jesus. A superior power. That every knee got to bow its, its knee to. If you bow your knee to Jesus in sowing, demons got to bow their knee to you that produce debts. Depression, stress, worry, fear. See, Job 36, 11 said, if you obey and serve him, you'll spend your days in prosperity, your years in pleasure. Who you think creating them years and them, 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 them days and them years? You. You done became the God creating the days and the years. Psalm 105. The word of the Lord tried him until his word came. So your word got a coming through. A coming out. A coming in. A coming forth. The, chore, the, the, the choreography of your word. See, see, prophecy is divine choreography to bring you into different wealth mines, gold mines, wealth portals, prosperity portals. Watch this. Verse 20, I want you to see this. And, and, and this is going to solidify why God connected you to me. The king sent and loosed them. Oh my God. Oh. Uh oh. Did you catch that? The king. No, no, I'm not talking about King Jesus. I'm not talking about King, the, 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 the king over the kings. I'm talking about the king on the earth. The king sent. What is the king sending? The word. My God. See, I'm sending the word to you right via Periscope, Facebook. I'm sending the word to you. The king sent and loosed them. Meaning stop all demonic activity. Watch this. 
the king sent and loosed them, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Jesus plant King Joshua Holmes to send the word to you, send the anointing to you, to loose you, to set you free. Watch this. Now look at Joseph after the kingdom set him free. Look at him. He made him Lord of his house. So, so when the king set you free, it's to, it's to bring, it's to train you, bring you into being a Lord. You know what Lord mean that you're a ruler, a, a, a God over a region, substance, wealth, people, people, people. Now, I ain't said people like they got more head than he got body. I said people. Some of y'all do got more head than you got body. Uh, people. Don't think about it. Get, get in the mirror. Stick, stick with the broadcast. The devil is a liar. That's what he was. He is and he is to come. A liar. <laughs> Satan got three realms. He was, he is, and he is to come. A liar. Look at verse, now I'm in verse 21. Y'all caught that? We're in verse 21. Psalm 105, verse 21. Look what it said. He made him Lord of his house. So now judgment and justice is stepping in. He made him Lord of his house. In the 21st verse. Now, now 21 going to work. 21 going to work. See, see, say, I, I, as I sow, I receive the Lordship anointing. Oh, my God. See, when you sowing strong, you receiving the Lordship anointing. To be a financial Lord. Now, I want, I want you to remember this too. When you sowing, you a loosing Lord. So you a Lord that loose. Miracles, you lose substance, justice, victory, power, prosperity, grace and glory. Grace and glory. Yeah, this hot. This hot. It's real hot. Is that? He made him Lord of his house and ruler. Watch this. Ruler of all his substance. Uh oh. So, so. Here come in that millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, God in their status. Here come the limitless, limitless, limitless. Limitless money anointed. Here is money cometh without boundaries. Money cometh without interruption. Money cometh without any set standards, parameters, amateurs. Now you ruler over all the substance. I'm showing you how when you honor in God, it going to look like you in prison. But God going to send the king, set you loose. Why the king set you loose? 
is to bring you into lordship. Not only lordship, then it's to bring you into ruler over all substance. Do, do, Say this, I am a God over money. And say this, the money just keep on coming to me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Now watch this. Some of you all got to catch how wealth enters you into deliverance ministry. Being rich, it establishes even more grace and more glory on you for deliverance ministry. I'm going to show you. Now look what it said right here. He made him ruler over all his substance. But look what verse 22 say. To bind his princes at his pleasure. Now you see a binding anointing. You caught that? See. When you let the Lord bring you into wealth. You have authority for deliverance ministry as well. In a strong, even a stronger vein. Because look, look what's happening now. He binding the princes. Now look at this. And teach. Uh oh, he, he becomes a teacher. See, some of y'all need to catch this. You know why I'm teaching you so strong? Because God will use you to teach somebody. I promise you that. Whether it be your children or somebody. God going to use your mouth at one point. You don't be e eager or anxious for that. But look what he said. To teach his senators wisdom. Why did he get this wisdom? Because now the king done set him free. Loosed him. Watch this. Look at verse 23. So, so verse 22 reveals to us that he has the anointed to bind. That's deliverance ministry. And then he has the anointed to teach. Now he's an impartation. A stream of impartation. Verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Watch this in verse 24. And he increased his people greatly. Here come the increase. Say, Father, I receive you increasing me greatly. You see this? He increased his people greatly. And made them stronger than their enemies. Are you catching these realms? Look how well is stopping the whole satanic kingdom. And, and see, you see how the church been bewitched by Satan? Because they say, what money got to do with it? What money got to do with it? All of this. You see this? You, you see you see how so many people up there talking about, oh, what does this got to do with the gospel? Oh, we need to be talking about souls. This, this, hereby you see in the text that the power for riches and wealth and increase and abundance and money coming and all that, that financial increase that God talking about is going to give you the power over the devil to bind his princes. What? The prince of the power of the air. 
Ephesians 6. Who are you binding? The prince of the power of the air. Bind all the princes. That means shut the satanic kingdom down. See, that's why the Lord placing the strong money anointing on you. Because you got longevity in the earth and he going to use you to put an end to the satanic kingdom in your region. And everywhere you go, you're going to have power over the devil. to make you roar. You're going to become a financial beast. Becoming a financial beast is in the blessed covenant. You, you're going to become aggressive. Because the kingdom of God suffered violence. The violence taken by force. So when I start obeying God and start listening to God, I'm fighting a good fight of faith. I'm taking a hold of my mind, my money, and I'm bringing the whole satanic kingdom back in subjection to Jesus. That's why you don't got time for no foolishness. You don't, listen, you don't got time to be weak. You don't got, got time to pity yourself. Dust yourself off. Move it on. Get your inheritance. Now. Get all the stuff over to the side. Everything that so easily beset you. Remember what the Bible said? The thing that so easily beset you, laying aside every weight. And, and the sin that so easily beset you. Let us go forward. Saints, if you let this wealth and honor sit on you, then we can start building stuff for Jesus. We can start putting large money into building stuff for Jesus. If I let the Holy Ghost teach me how to work, how to worship, how to be wise, how to sow, you can become a dominator. And watch this. Solomon built his own house, right? I prophesy to you that you'll build your own house. S Solomon did it. He did it underneath the old. You'll do it underneath the new. You'll build your own house. 